Hey, welcome. This is part two of the two-part series, hopefully two-part series, of a large 68-inch diamond round table that I built for a customer. In part one, I covered the lead up to this point where I had a massive 10-gallon epoxy leak. Yeah, it was quite a nightmare. You can see my shoddy patchwork there and, and just overall was not fun. But yeah, so anyway, let's get into this. At this point, I'm just demolding it. I'm trying to remove the trim, but because of the leak, the screws that are holding the trim on are actually covered in epoxy. It was impossible for me to get my screwdriver in there. So just dealing with that headache. If you're interested, I have links down below about all the materials I use and tools I use. This material is actually a garden trim. It's used for landscaping in your garden. It actually works really well. Epoxy doesn't stick to it at all. Except when you have a leak and yeah, you're dealing with this nightmare. So as you can see, once you get to it and you don't have a leak like I do, this thing really does pop right off. I can't recommend this, this trim highly enough, especially for round table builds. Now this table ended up being 68 inches in final diameter. So at this point, I'm just trying to find the dead center where I'm gonna take my radiuses from and that way I can cut it down. But before I cut it down, I wanted to surface plane both sides and get it flat and almost to its final thickness. This way it would make it a lot easier when I do use my circle cutting jig to cut it down to the final diameter. Now, if you're interested, some of you may be asking what I'm using here for my surface planer, this jig that I made up. That's extruded aluminum and it's 8040. It's pretty beefy stuff and I highly recommend it. It's amazing stuff. You can build almost anything out of it. And this is what they use for CNC milling machines and stuff like that. I definitely plan to make a full video covering this setup that I created. It's not perfect by any means. I need to make a few more upgrades. Uh, you can fully automate these things. I've seen some pretty crazy, incredible, ingenious things that people have made. Um, I wish I was that creative, otherwise I'd think of them on myself, but copying is the uh, highest form of flattery, right? Something like that, whatever. Anyways, if you're interested, I will have that video out hopefully soon, if I'm not too lazy, maybe in the next couple of weeks. In the meantime, what would help me not be lazy is if you hit the like or subscribe button, or both, preferably. Or hell, even hit the thumbs down button. Just give me some feedback. I appreciate it, thank you. So I should mention here, as a disclaimer, you always wanna wear a respirator when you're working with this stuff, especially when you're planing and routing like this. The fine dust gets kicked up in the air and you got two-part epoxy. It's really not good for you, trust me. I, there's times where I haven't been wearing my respirator and I'm blowing black, spitting up black for the rest of the day, if not more. So always wear your respirator and safety equipment at all times. The top is now planed down and smooth and I can get the rust out with a sander. I left it behind a few burn marks you can kind of see there. My bit started to get a little dull in the end. This white oak was pretty dense and, and chewed up my bit. And it wasn't a cheap bit, but and anyway, so at this point, I'm just trying to remove the melamine that's attached to the bottom. I left it on to keep a nice flat surface. That way I could have a true plane and parallel to the bottom. So you're going to see in a little bit that I do struggle to get this bottom off. I used mold release, but for whatever reason, the mold release really didn't prevent the bottom from sticking. I'm not sure why exactly. I think going forward on my projects, I'm gonna switch to just using Tyvek tape or tuck tape. So at this point, I'm thanking myself for going to the gym for all those years and doing all those deadlifts. Uh, it really paid off. Even though I'm not in the same shape I used to be, this wasn't a light table and I wish I'd had a helper, but I managed to get it flipped over. Now it's time to remove the melamine. Like I already mentioned, this did not come off very easily. In fact, it didn't really come off at all. I gave it a pretty college effort try here and was working on it for about an hour trying to get an edge up so I could pry up the rest of it. I just could not get any part of it up to get underneath it. So I ended up just planing it down with the planer. It took forever and it created an incredible mess, but in the end I got it done. So now that we have the bottom planed and the top planed, 
I made up this circle cutting jig. I didn't have one large enough, so I actually just took a piece of melamine scrap, attached a couple fences on either side, uh, fitted it to this router that I have, and then just routed out the middle. It's pretty simple and straightforward. And now that I have it for these really large diameter projects going forward. In order to make this cut to the final diameter, I just used a half inch straight bit and made a lot of little shallow passes. I want to say about a quarter of an inch material removal each time, so about six to eight passes all the way around. So I misspoke a little bit before. I didn't cut all the way through with the router. I actually cut mostly through and then I finished it off with the jigsaw. I then went back and you'll see in a little bit and I cleaned up the edge with a uh, bearing bit. So as you can see, I'm using my form bit now just to trim it down to its final diameter. I'm making small shallow passes like before, that way I don't have too much chip out. This table is about two inches thick, a little over two inches thick at this point. So if you try to take out too much at one time, you can easily chip out the epoxy, gouge it, etc. Unless you have a super sharp bit, which I unfortunately do not. And voila, look, you're done. No, just kidding. I actually just didn't put the sanding video in here just because uh, if you've watched any of my videos, you know what sanding looks like. I really don't need to show you any more sanding. If you really are interested, just DM me and I'll send you the seven hours of footage that I have and you can gladly watch it all. So anyway, at this point, I'm going back over with CA glue and accelerator. You can see that. Again, links for the, all this stuff are gonna be down below in the description. And I'm just filling any holes or cracks or things that got missed during the planing, during the whole pour process. I just realized though, I didn't comment on what I did right before this. I just used mineral spirits to clean off any of the dust and just have it all pop. That way it exposes all the little imperfections in the epoxy. Honestly, you can probably spend hours and hours doing this, filling all of the little tiny bubbles that you don't really notice during the sanding process. And if you really want to have a truly professional look, you got to go back over and fill as many of them as possible. Uh, at this point, I'm just sanding down the latest round I did and just trying to get it flush and smooth. And no, that was not a ghost that just walked by the camera. That was my girlfriend. So sorry about that. I didn't realize it in post editing and I just left it in. Why not? Here's an example of some imperfections that were in the epoxy. Those are air bubbles that I recently filled with CA glue. At this point, I'm using this Baco scraper to go back over and just smooth it all down before I give it a final polish and sanding. I can't say enough good things about this scraper. It really, really made short work of getting this down to a smooth surface. And if you do get into this type of stuff, I highly recommend picking one of these up. Getting into the home stretch here, one of the last things I do is I usually apply a eighth inch or quarter inch round over to all the edges. Um, it just gives it a much more refined and polished look than trying to do it by hand. Uh, obviously, once you do this, I do touch up a little bit with sandpaper just to get rid of any slight raised edge that is left over, but this is one of the last steps. So 
So I bought the legs off a seller off Etsy. The client selected it and they selected the color and it matched really well with the coloring of the tabletop. And overall, I, I love the look of them. You'll see it in a little bit. So here it's just exciting footage of me taking it out of a box. Now for the finish, I use Rubio Monaco 2C oil something, I don't know, it's a long name, but this is the pure version, which means there's no tint. Uh, there is a natural version, which originally I bought, but the natural turns out to actually have a tint, so just be careful with that. I'll leave a link below in the description to this exact product if you're interested. Um, but if you don't use this, use whatever you prefer. I'm not a spokesperson, and I'm not sponsored by them. I don't get anything from recommending their products, but I do highly recommend this. It's very easy to mix together, very easy to apply, and very long-lasting and durable. So it's a two-to-one mixture, volume-wise. You just put it together, part A and part B, spread it on, let it soak in a little bit, and then buff it out. It really is just that simple. You can start using it within 24 hours, light use, and then they usually recommend about a week before any heavy use or introducing liquids to it. Now this last step is not necessary, but I'm just using my drill with the polishing pad attachment. Um, if you have a buffer, you can use that too, but or just make sure to use a terry cloth and get every little bit off. You don't want to leave any of this left behind. It will harden and become very difficult to get off later down the road. Well, that's about it. So if you've made it this far, I appreciate you watching, and obviously I didn't bore you to death. So anyways, if you're interested in more pictures, I have my Instagram up, and you can go check it out. The client was nice enough to provide their home for me and, and share pictures and it came out really beautiful where they have it staged and it just goes really well with their home. So anyway, thanks again for watching and take care.